So about a week ago, Waves released the latest version of the Motion LV1 mixer. You can see the version on the screen. And I just wanted to take you through and show you some features and show you that I can wear a shirt of color. So I'm just gonna start by taking you down the list. Uh, the first update that is huge is the Dugan Speech, or their LV1 version of the Dugan Auto Mixer. So I don't actually have this license to run Dugan Speech, and for most of what I do, I don't really need it. Uh, so I'm just gonna skip that and go into my favorite update, which is Custom Layers. So here on the mixer, this is all familiar, but what's been added now is this button at the top that allows you to get custom pages. Now here's the cool thing about that. You have eight separate pages that you can basically add anything you want. And what's unique about this is you would gain more slots than you would have in the regular banks of faders. You can assign anything you want so right here we've just got a mock session uh, pulled up, a small country band that I made up on the fly. We are using only one IOX on stage, uh, using all 12 inputs. And then we have our reverb returns right here. And you can take any one of these faders and position them anywhere you want. You can stick the reverb right next to the kick or move two over. Basically any way you want this to be, you can set it up. So for me, this is absolutely huge. We'll go into page two. Uh, you can see we've got our monitor set up, a left right mix, Q mix, and then our talk back. And then the last page, just for fun and for examples later, uh, I've got some uh, DCAs set up uh, and then I'll show uh, how those are a little bit different in the latest update. I wanted to mention one more thing with the custom layers. Uh, you have these tabs now that you can pull down and I'll just briefly go over what these mean. So down at the bottom here, of course, you can go and select any of your channels that are available on your mixer, depending on which one you have initialized. Here, you have the option to clear the page, uh, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to erase everything that I did. You have the option to lock the strips, which this is great because if you're moving around quickly, you won't be able to move the channels, which is nice. Uh, you have the option to copy from a factory layer. So if you just want to get somewhere really quick, uh, that's the way, way to do it. When I set up this layer, I actually copied from the factory layer first, and then I did everything else individually. You have the option to optimize the layer layout, which as far as I can tell, just pushes everything to the left. But I like having things visually separated. So this is how I run it. And if you need to make an adjustment to a strip that's already in, then you can just hit control click and you have access to all of the options again. All right, let's talk about the next feature called DCA spill that's new to the LV-1. So if we go to my page three here on my custom layer, I've got a DCA setup. You can also find them uh, on page eight in the regular mixer. But now what you can do is you can assign channels to a particular DCA and have them easily spell out. And you have a function key you can assign as well. So in my example, uh, what I would find easy in this solution is to select the monitors and then I would normally be mixing along. And if I need to make any adjustment to the four monitor sounds, then I could just hit the spell key. Uh, here's the DCA for the monitors and then here's uh, individual monitors if I need to access those quickly. You could also take your toms or if you have a group of guitars or whatever you need to, and then easily spill uh, those to the top layer. Now, what you do have to do, you'll need to go in and select what uh, DCA you are spilling to. Uh, of course, you could assign it up here, but that's how you get everything to spill. So if we were on drums, here's our drums to spill. 
bass, guitars, etc. But the way I would probably use it most of the time is just grabbing uh, monitors or something I needed to access uh, quickly while I'm mixing a show. All right, so if we go to the setup page, uh, you can see under Mixing Engine Performance, uh, there's these two options. You can either select Latency Optimize or DSP Optimized. Um, if you want to go into more detail about how it manages the network buffer between the two, you can go to page 42 of the manual and it explains it in detail. Uh, so when you open your mixer, uh, now the monitor sends are monoed by default, uh, which is convenient. And they are also not routed to your left and right. All right, so we have the ability to update all scenes now. What does that mean? That means on a particular channel, we'll select kick. You can go up to the top here and you have some options. You have update current scene, which updates that single fader for the current scene you're on. You can update that fader from scenes on your list. So uh, we're on cooking is the mission right now. Fine country tune. But you'd like to update the kick drum, fader, uh, plugins, uh, anything else that you don't have saved uh, from You Complete Me, then you can go here and do so. And you have the option to update, in this case, the kick channel on all scenes if you choose this option. And that will basically paste whatever settings you have on the kick drum uh, across all scenes. But you can do that option on any channel uh, on an individual basis and then continue on uh, mixing your show. On the subject of scenes, since we talked about updating scenes on a per channel basis, if you go into your show here, it's important to note what you have scoped or saved. Recall safe is going to be uh, parameters, uh, name or channels that you absolutely don't want to uh, have any automatic adjustments at all. For example, if you have a narrator during the show that is getting up and talking frequently and you don't want there to be any chance that you'll accidentally change the narrator's mic. So it's important to go in and recall safe any parameters that you don't want adjusted. However, if you want to adjust parameters sometimes, then you can go in on a scene by scene basis and disable any parameter that you don't want adjusted. And you can do that without being on the scene. Uh, so we'll go to clean up after my mess and we will deselect a couple things and then go to cooking is the mission and you can see that those are back on again. Okay, so if you've been routing your show and you get in a place where you have no idea what's going on and you just want to throw in the towel and start all over, you can now clear everything with a click of a button. And I could see that especially being useful um, if you've got a ton of patching, uh, you're using something in the neighborhood of 128 I.O., and you have no idea what's going on anymore, and you just need to start from scratch. Moving along, you can now see the delay in the delay groups. So if you're trying to manage your latency, uh, you can see what is happening on all 16 of your delay groups. And then you have the option between feet, meters, milliseconds, and samples as, as well. Though I find it easy just to stay in milliseconds because everything else I do in live sound is milliseconds. So I just keep it there. Okay. So up next on the list is improved channel naming workflow. It's near the bottom, but I think this should be near the top because before what you'd have to do is go in and label it kick, hit enter, double click on the next one, enter, move along, and it took forever to name a session. Now all you have to do is hit tab. 
So, kick, snare, tom one, tab, 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 tab. Super, super easy to name all your stuff. And if you're on the custom layer, then you can even move across to other faders on that strip. That for me is huge because it makes setting up a session so much faster. All right, so next on the list is no default route for aux buses. Uh, your effects and monitors are not going to be assigned to your left and right by the default. Uh, we talked a little bit about that earlier. So moving along, we have bigger mute buttons down here in the bottom left. And then lastly on the list, you can have a different mode selected per layer. That means here on page one, I can have input selected and I can go to page two. I can have the dynamics EQ section displayed here and go back and forth and see what I want to see based on what page I'm on. Now, one thing that I did notice, it won't work if you're in the regular mixer view. So one through 16 here, we've got selected to input and we can change 17 through 32 to rack and go back and forth and it is still the same. But like I said, most of what you're going to be doing now is all gonna be in the custom layer. All right, well that about does it for now. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter if you wanna stay up to date in the world of pro audio and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks again.